exceptionally interesting. I mean, we can look back on, we've been around the world six times since 1421 was published. And you meet very, very interesting, nice people, learn a hell of a lot. So it's, you know, just there are other things in life than money, basically. But the good thing is it sounds like there's always been the provision to be able to travel, to do the research, and to do the writing. There's been a sufficiency in terms of the provision that's been made available to you and that you've created, right? But that's absolutely true. But it has soaked up a hell of a lot of money. I mean, research, travel, and research for the Lost Empire of Atlantis really did soak up a lot. It would be nice to be able to have that refunded. Because <laughs> really what you've done is you've established a new frame of reference for history. You and the team. Uh, me and the team and the publishers and my agent, my literary agent, Luigi Bonomi, my PR people, Midas. Um, it's over 100 people worked on the book 1421. And uh, each book has been a, t- a team effort. So all I've tried to do is to be a sort of reasonably conscientious member of the team and get on with it. How was the editing for The Lost Empire of Atlantis for you, the editing um, process? It was... My my writing is very austere and I'm very cautious and conservative, though you mightn't think it, so I wrote a pretty conservative, unreadable book to start with. <laughs> and Gaynor Olsen, who was engaged by Iran... Uh, basically helped to restructure the book. So as I say, it is a team effort and there were lots and lots of people working with Iran and myself to to make it all happen. Were you nervous that the editing would change the way the information was parlayed? Yes. And um, that was rather fraught at times, but it's all in the past now and I'm very happy. You and your team have a way of writing that takes the reader right into the scenario, into the place of antiquity, to that time. There's an ancient feeling to all the writing. Well, thank you very much. Why did the Bronze Age mining cease in Britain, Ireland, and Americas in 1500 BC? It all ceased because of the violent eruption which happened in Santorini, this volcano volcano exploded, blew the middle of the island out. It's, the tsunami smashed the ships to bits, wrecked all the palaces, ended the civilization of, of the Minoans, or Atlantis, as you want to call it. And therefore, there were no ships going to America. The mines just shut down. There were no ships going to Cornwall. Tin mining shut down, and, and so on. So it all happened quite quickly after this ghastly volcanic eruption. And Gavin, I know that you're very conservative, even though you're really open in the way that you go through your analysis and examination. And I've never asked you this before, so you can take the fifth. (laughs) But do you think that in any way you've had celestial help and guidance, maybe divine guidance in any way, to move you along and to prompt you and to follow your hunches? Well, I'm sure there are lots of things we don't know about, so I don't want to be disparaging about celestial help, but I think I've just been spectacularly lucky in timing, really, and and getting such excellent publishers and such a professional team to help me, to whom I'm indebted. I look forward to meeting you and your wife in London, Gavin. So do I. Very much look forward to seeing you. So you you let us know when that's going to be. It's going to be in the next two months. I know. Jolly good. Thank (laughs) you very much for inviting me. I've hugely enjoyed it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking with, learning from, and listening to Gavin Menzies, the author of 1421, the year China discovered America, 1434, the year a magnificent Chinese fleet sailed to Italy and ignited the Renaissance, and now the lost empire of Atlantis, history's greatest mystery revealed.